we were surprised because this was our second trip to Niue. We hadn't experienced how many humpbacks would be around. You'd hear their blows right against the the side of the boat, and everyone would get up and go outside to the rail and look down at them. They're the group of humpbacks that spends most of the year feeding down in Antarctica. And then in the winter time, they move up into the South Pacific Islands. So, you know, Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, the Cook Islands and Niue. Because Niue is so small and not many people have heard of it, I don't think a lot of people realize how many whales are there and what an amazing opportunity is to feed them. It's pretty incredible to be able to get that close to these big animals. I mean, we saw a couple calves that are only just a few weeks old and they're just hanging really close to their moms. Their moms are, are teaching them how to swim, how to breathe, all the things they need to do. The population in the Niue is increasing. It's probably somewhere like 150 animals at present. The humpback whale population for Oceania, the islands of the Pacific, is somewhere about 5,000. It's 35 to 37 percent of what it looked like pre-exploitation. So although there it's increasing, it's still got a long way to go to get back to what it was like before industrial whaling pretty much made them extinct. It's been 50, 70 years of recovery. It's going to take a while longer, but it is encouraging. Christine Seas has been in effect for about 15 years or so. We've done 40 plus expeditions from pole to pole and every place in between and led to the protection of 26 large scale marine protected areas over six and a half million square kilometers of some of the last wild places in the ocean. Without healthy oceans, we wouldn't be here. Half of all the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean protein from the sea, tens of millions of people around the world rely on it. We're really on this mission to protect special and wild places, primarily in the Pacific Ocean over the next five years for the benefit of mankind and for nature as well. We talk about global climate change, reefs are getting bleached, the water temperature is increasing rapidly. And so as a result, corals are having a difficult time surviving. Basically no place in the ocean is immune to plastic pollution. We need a big rethink. It's a small country that's not well known, that's totally reliant on local fishing for supplying their food. So there's this idea among fishermen or the fishing industry and some people that protection means you're just going to lose the ability to fish and you're going to lose access to resources and it makes things more difficult. But over and over, the reality is restricting fishing in some locations or protecting areas actually increases the amount of fish available over time. And sometimes it's hard for people to think like generations down the line, but that's really what we need to do to save the oceans is protect parts of it to allow fish and resources to regroup, not be harvested, to make more offspring that swim out over and over again. With Niue, they've, they've seen that, they've understood that, and they're one of the first countries to protect more than 30% of their waters. Niue has just been a model for the world about how to move forward with marine conservation. 40% of their EEZ as large scale protection was the first step. And now they've said, well, you know, it doesn't help if you only effectively manage 40% of your exclusive economic zone. You really need to manage the whole thing. They've created a large marine spatial plan for their entire exclusive economic zone. And on our recent expedition, we certainly saw that the reefs look healthy. There's lots of sharks around. Things look pretty good. I can't say that for some of the other places that we've visited or revisited. So it, it's a race. The bad guys are always figuring ingenious ways to circumvent the system. But places like Niue have done a good job of managing and enforcing what they have. I do find hope, you know, particularly in some of these places that we go that are just awe inspiring, right? You go to these places and they're what places look like without people. And we know that the oceans are resilient and there's been lots of cases where the ocean has come back if 
they were given the chance. And that's that's the key there is, you know, we need to give the oceans a chance. We need to be a lot smarter about how we use the ocean and how we manage the ocean. I, I do think we have a fairly long way to go, but we're running out of time. These global commitments to protect 30% of the planet by 2030 are ambitious, but necessary. And in fact, I would say that 30% should be a floor, not a ceiling. Our umbrella mission stays the same, which is exploration and ocean conservation and protection, usually through protected areas. The idea is really to keep things sustainable for them. I think you lead by example and, and making positive change. And I think that's what we're doing.